Okay, chapter 10, determining how costs behave. This is part two, estimation methods. Now we just, we talked about, um, sorry, we talked about some of the, you know, some of the ways the costs behave and linear cost functions and how important it is to establish causality in estimating costs. In this presentation, we'll look at various methods of cost estimation and outline the six steps in estimating a cost function using um, quantitative analysis. So we've got four different methods that we'll use or that are you know commonly referred to. The first one is industrial engineering and then a conference method, um, account analysis, well, quantitative analysis methods then include the high-low method and regression. And um, they've got an understatement sentence here saying that th this, these methods are not usually mutually exclusive and often more than one is used, always more than one is used, okay? You've got to talk to engineers and get details on cost, always sit down with the people who work a product and know we have, you know, have real first-hand knowledge with how something is made. Account analysis, I always do because you find things by just looking at the numbers, I mean visually scanning them. And then you want to do some quantitative analysis and hopefully once you take all these together, you come up with a, a model that looks pretty good, okay, because you're really trying to do a good job on this. This isn't gamed, you know, you're not trying to make it high or make it low. So first for industrial engineering, it estimates cost functions by analyzing the relationship between inputs and outputs in physical terms. So the things that are done are time and motion studies. They're very detailed um, when there's a physical relationship, but these are also very costly and time uh, consuming. They're called a work measurement. It's called a work measurement method, and sometimes a government contract will mandate these. Uh, the people that are involved that are being analyzed are generally not happy about it. Okay, but it's another piece of the pie, so you do it just for the information that you get from it. Okay, the next is a conference method. Uh, these methods differ in terms of how expensive they are to implement, the assumptions they make, and the information they provide about the accuracy of the estimated cost function. Some of the characteristics of the cost of the conference method are that it estimates cost functions on the basis of analysis and opinions about costs and their drivers gathered from various departments of a company. Okay, but people know, people pools expert knowledge, increasing credibility, and you look for confirmation of statements. And because opinions are being used, the accuracy of the cost estimate depends largely on the care and skill of the people providing the inputs. Okay, but you still want to talk to people because people know. That's why good relations are important in a company. You know, you want to be the person who people like, who people like to talk to. Now, our third method to estimate costs is the account analysis method. And characteristics of this include um, estimating cost function by classifying various accounts as fixed, variable, or mixed in respect to the identified level of activity. Uh, typically, managers use qualitative rather than quantitative analysis when making these cost classifications. It's widely used because it's reasonably accurate, it's cost effective, and it's easy to use. We've got the numbers all summarized in a ledger. And the accuracy of the account analysis method depends on the accuracy of the qualitative judgment that managers and management accountants make about which costs are fixed and which are variable, okay, and which are mixed. So that's, you know, this that's the the um, the tricky part right there. But each one each one of these methods will have some strengths and weaknesses, and by the time you're done, you'll have some consensus on numbers. Now the fourth and last method is the quantitative analysis method, and this is the only method that relies on mathematics. Um, Excel or any other soft, you know, similar software is, is a useful tool to perform it, and characteristics include use of a formal mathematical model to fit cost functions to past data observations. Okay, so hopefully the past is still relevant to the future.
The advantage is that the results are objective. There isn't any judgment involved, and it's the most rigorous approach to estimate costs. But the challenge is that it requires detailed information about costs, cost drivers, and cost functions, and is therefore my, more time-consuming. So there are six steps in estimating a cost function using quantitative analysis. And these, the steps are, first of all, to choose your dependent variable, the cost uh, to be predicted and managed. Okay, that's, that's the why. Identify the independent variable. The independent variable is the level of activity or the cost driver. Now, just think about multiple choice questions and, and exams. Okay, you're going to want to know what the dependent variable is and what the independent variable is. Okay, so the dependent variable is the cost to be managed or predicted, okay? And the independent variable is the level of activity. Collect data on it. Plot it to observe the general relationship. I love plots because they t show you where something's crazy and, and way out there. Um, estimate the cost function using two common forms of quant quantitative analysis, the high-low method or regression. Then evaluate the cost driver of the estimated cost function. Okay. Now we'll look at the high low method first. It's the simplest method of quantitative analysis, and all you do is you use the highest and the lowest um, observed values and fit a line to those two data points. So you could have all kinds of wiggles in between there that you're not picking up. Um, there are three steps in the high-low method, and we'll take a closer look at the step, but I take some shortcuts, so if you really want to get into the steps, you can read the book on it. I'd rather have, like, a good format to fill in. Um, and what you're doing is you're calculating the slope coefficient, the variable cost, first. Okay, you've got two unknowns, the variable cost and the fixed cost. So once you solve for one unknown, you can just plug it in to, to uh, either formula and find out what your, your fixed cost is and have a cost function. So the slope coefficient is the difference between costs associated with the highest and lowest observations. Okay, so in our example, we've got a high activity of 100 at a cost of 2,500 and a low activity of 80 at a cost of 2,100. Okay, now this is how they do it. I want you to look at one other, one other way here. What we could do is just put a little chart together here with dollars and units. Put dollars first, okay, because you don't want to be dumb, so that's DU, and then high and low, and then the change in the account. So at the high level, we had um, a cost of 2500 $2,500 in units are 100 and at the low level, our lower volume, lower cost is 2100 and our volume is 80 So the change in here is 400 units, I'm sorry, 20 units cost $400. Okay, so the change, the stuff that would change would only be the variable cost, right? So I can take the dollars, 400, divided by 20, and get a $20 variable cost per unit. Okay, so now we're all set. Now we can just substitute it. And you can do it at the higher or the lower level of activity. It'll give you the same fixed cost. So uh, rather than the, I've got a, a different, I don't know, more descriptive cost function here, we've got the total cost is equal to the fixed cost plus variable cost per unit times the number of units. Okay, so the total cost, if we just take the top one, 2500 equals the fixed cost is what we're solving for, times 20 times 100. Okay, $20 in variable cost times 100 units. So that's 2000 Our fixed cost is 500 And you could run the same, do the same formula at the low level, and you'll get the same $500 of fixed cost. Okay. I just think it's easier than all the steps. The book has a million steps in it. Um, I would cut it short. Okay, and the last one we'll look at is regression analysis. 
and that is a statistical method that measures the average amount of change in the dependent variable associated with a unit change in one or more independent variables. Okay, so regression is more accurate than the high-low method because it estimates all costs from all observations. Okay, so it, it you know it uses least squares, um, whereas the the two observations will take the high and the low. But like I said, um, all kinds of things can happen in between. Now we've got simple regression and multiple regression, two types. Simple regression estimates the relationship between the dependent variable and one independent variable, whereas multiple regression estimates the relationship between the dependent variable and two or more independent variables. Okay, so you could use a couple different things, a couple different drivers in multiple regression and have a pretty good, a pretty good um, number. And regression is widely used because it helps managers understand why costs behave as they do and what managers can do to influence them. And some of the terminolo terminology and regression analysis that you want to know, you definitely want to know what goodness of fit is, okay? Measures the strength of the relationship between the driver and the cost. You want to know something about the residual, okay? Residual term measures the difference between actual costs and estimated costs for each observation. The smaller the residual, the better the fit, okay? If you've got a large residual, then it looks like you're missing a variable, okay? You miss some of the cost drivers or some of the descriptors that, that made the cost change. And we'll work problems on this, and there's some information in your notes that'll be helpful. And here's a visual description of, of um, least squares. And this, you know, this regression line was determined using least squares, and it it minimizes the sum of the squared vertical differences from the data point to the regression line. And the vertical difference is called the residual term, okay, and it measures between actual cost and estimated cost for each observation of the cost driver. The smaller the residual, the better the fit. Okay, let me just see one more, one more after this, and then we can work some problems.